Good morning, YouTube. Born to be wild, N-E here. And as always, N-E stands for Nebraska. Go Big Red. Yay, Huskers. Hey, it's Labor Day Monday, 2017. I'm out for a ride. Currently, I just exited Seward, Nebraska, going west on Highway 34. No specific riding plans in mind. I do have to be home by 3 p.m. unless I change the arrangement in order to FaceTime with my Kentucky family, including my two-year-old grandson. So there's a, a limit on my ride. Unless I want to call and postpone that arrangement, which <laughs> I really don't want to do. <laughs> nice and cool today, at least to start the day. Forecast for Lincoln calls for a high of 84. Right now it's, you know, got to be 70, 72, something like that. Uh, there is some humidity, so that impacts how you feel a little bit. You can see there's some hazy clouds, at least to the north, the west, and a little bit to the south. Actually behind us, too. So I've got my rain jacket in my side bag if I need it. Got the rain cover from my tank bag in this little pouch. Got an extra pair of gloves, should these get wet. Didn't bring my rain pants with me, just because the forecast of precipitation was so, so low. Like most of you, I suspect that, uh, you know, if you can keep your top half warm and dry, uh, you can get through getting your legs wet. I haven't been on the bike for, well, since this is Monday, I guess three Sundays ago. When I rolled back into Lincoln from a short trip to Colorado through the sand hills of Nebraska, first two days I actually rode with my brother who was coming through on a uh, cross country tour from South Florida to San Francisco. He stayed with me one night and the next day we rode together out to Alliance, Nebraska. And the next day, we uh, actually took some uh, backcountry gravel roads in Wyoming that uh, delivered us to Laramie, Wyoming, and rode by the University of Wyoming Cowboy Stadium, and then shot down to Fort Collins, where I stayed a couple nights with some really good friends. third day, my brother just took off on the next leg of his planned trip. He had a he had a, a schedule that he had to make because he was shipping his bike back and flying back and he had a uh, like a two or three hour window on a specified day for delivering his bike to the shippers and then the next day he was flying home. So he couldn't dally. The third day, I rode up uh, Poudre Canyon and then uh, across the high plateau or the north and south parks, whatever, or said north park, rode up into Wyoming um, and then de across back east across the Snowy Range, uh, back into Laramie again, and then down, uh, I think it's 287 four-lane divided highway quite a bit, 
Uh, but once you get to the Colorado border, woohoo! Some beautiful, beautiful scenery. And it is kind of funny because it almost seems to start at the state border. <laughs> so, weird. So that was the third day, and then uh, my friends and I went out to supper, and then Sunday morning I got up relatively early for me anyway. Um, and took off a long journey back to Lincoln. Uh, stayed off the interstate the whole trip. Uh, stayed off the interstate probably cost me somewhere around two hours of riding time. If you're thinking of just the time. However, if you're thinking about being on the bike, that's two more hours to have been on the bike. <laughs> so, uh, pros and cons that one has to weigh, eh? Oh, I wish I could do some big tours, but I am still trying to find employment. Uh, it's becoming a little bit discouraging, or quite a bit discouraging, I have to say. Um, after two large global companies merged last November, uh, one of those being the piece of the company that I was part of in a bigger global company. Uh, we were the acquired. Uh, the acquirer hired a consulting firm, which is pretty typical, and they scanned their global organization for opportunities for restructuring the organization, uh, streamlining their cost structure, etc. And unfortunately, uh, my position was included in all those that positions that got eliminated. So I got a pretty good severance package uh, because it was under that kind of a situation. And, and I'm still living on, on that severance package. Uh, but that's really not what I wanted to have happen. I want to work. I, uh, you know, Working is a very important part of my life. And I love to contribute to a team, contribute to goal achievement, making a difference in whatever ways that I can. And while I, I really am uncomfortable selling myself, uh, you know, when you're out there on the job market, you should kind of put that dislike aside um, and you know I've had this my own personal opinion affirmed by lots and lots of other people who have worked with me and known me over the years you know I have a I have a lot of uh, lots of talents and skills I, I I think critically I have real experience in a number of different functional areas throughout my life and uh, that allows me to think critically uh, about an issue or a, a situation and assess it or lead people to assess it uh, from very many different perspectives so that we can make a good, solid decision. Obviously, the risk associated with any one decision or situation that you're evaluating, that risk level that's associated with that will determine uh, to what degree you, you know, engage others, uh, drive out to an understanding of different perspectives. You know, some little piddly thing that there's not a lot of risk there, either to goal achievement or the desired organizational culture, uh, you don't want to spend huge amounts of time. <laughs> uh, you may want to just do a, a cursory review to make sure you're not missing anything that might be significant to either goal achievement or uh, desired culture. Uh, but then you move on. One thing I've noticed in my career is that... Uh, 
Utica, 844 souls strong, as of the point in time they needed to order that particular population sign. Back to what I was saying, what, I, what I've what i seen in lots of organizations is um, either the inability or the lack of discipline or the unwillingness to spend the effort to define the problem or the situation thoroughly and um, understand necessary root causes if you're troubleshooting something or potential future causes of issues if you're designing a new something, process, whatever. Um, Now, that's not the way it is in all organizations, but I'd say, in my experience, the vast majority of organizations, uh, I see that in. We human beings want to solve problems. We want to take action. Uh And what I've seen is when we take action or solve the wrong problem, a whole, whole lot of the time, we actually make things worse. Uh, so, you know, I, 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 I like to encourage whatever level of reflection and analysis and investigation is appropriate for the issue or situation at hand to be extended so that as we look to solve problems, we're solving uh, a right problem and in you know good, productive ways. Anyway, lots of blah, blah, blah about the unemployment. Uh, certainly frustrated. A uh, couple things that could be working against me. I, I don't know for sure, but one might be my age. Folks may be trying to figure out what my age is and say, oh, he's 63 or sitting there or thereabouts who just wants to work for a couple more years or, you know, get to Social Security full draw or what have you. And that's not the case for me. I, uh, you know, I, I thrive on making a difference, contributing, and uh, I, I'm missing that in my life, and it's not good for me. And I want to work until 70 or, you know, if that, getting close to that date, I'd reassess it to see if I wanted to go longer. Uh, so it's not like I'm looking for a short-term gig just to, you know, burn some time and get to full retirement age. And then the second thing that I, I think might come in play is, um, I'm not a specialist. I'm a generalist, but I'm a generalist who has real experience in quality management, quality programs, quality culture. Uh, I have played in not as a project manager, but with project planning and project status reporting for much of my career. Uh, Requirements definition, as you know, as from my previous discussion, uh, you know, if, if we if we don't define the right goal uh, and then understand the requirements to achieve that goal, uh, we're we're not going. Our, our probability of achieving the goal is low. I have done functional accounting. I've done some financial analysis, decision analysis, looking at uh, you know financials of different alternatives, looking at break-even periods and uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, not a great deal, but uh, you know I understand the time value of money and uh, the concepts present value, net present value, etc., etc.
in the insurance world. Uh, this is the fixed life and annuity world. Uh, you know, I've been exposed to policyholder services as well as new business uh, issue issuing, uh, both in the individual market and in individual products that were marketed at the work site or through the work site. So, uh, you know, I know a lot of companies believe they're looking for specialists. Has this person been a requirements business analyst for X number of years, whatever they determine uh, their situation needs? Uh, and I look at myself and I say, I'm adaptable. I can do lots of different things and do them really well. Uh, I want to make a difference. I can work within, if there's already an existing system that works for the organization, I could work within that system. And if they need help reviewing that system and looking for improvements, I can do that too. And if we're working within a, an existing system, I can always be on the lookout, working with my, my own mind and with input from others to identify possible ways to improve that already existing system. Continual process improvement. Um, you know, process improvement can be proactive uh, by trying to anticipate potential issues and risks and looking for cost-effective ways of mitigating those issues or risks before actual problems are encountered. Or it can certainly be reactive process improvement where, uh, you know, we've had <laughs> an unsatisfactory level of errors in a certain situation. And we really need to get in and understand the root cause or causes so that we can evaluate improvement alternatives, seeking out, again, cost-effective ways to mitigate and improve the exposure to Six Sigma, not a green belt or another colored belt, but I understand DMAIC, uh, you know, the old, the old, you go way back, you talk about the scientific method, you know, a lot of that stuff is, you know, some of the basics, the core things are very, very similar. They can be approached in different ways and that those approaches have, you know, kind of modified over the years, hopefully always improving. <coughs> Excuse me. Anyway, long diatribe. I'm frustrated. I'm, my my uh, feelings of self-worth are diminishing. Uh, I know I can do a really good job in a number of different functional roles for an organization. Uh, I'm afraid I'm up against a couple things, age and uh, not being a specialist, that I'm not quite sure how to overcome. Lately, I've taken the approach of just being really straightforward uh, with a prospective employer that, you know, with which I apply. And talking about my age and talking about my situation, I am not looking for a two-year gig and then to go off to retirement nirvana. You know, I'm, I'm in this thing for the next seven years or, or longer, and that's a long enough time where I can uh, make significant contributions over a prolonged period of time and also grow within the company if... I earn it. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I, I didn't start the little segment with that intention, but that's where we ended. Uh, I'll, I'll shut this one down and uh, wish everybody a great Labor Day. And uh, as always, take care all. <laughs>